Bhopal is a strange city of pharmacies and photocopiers. The chemists offer ointments to soothe incurable diseases, while the Xeroxes are busy documenting a thousand lawsuits. The carbide dollars are frozen, while Indian lawyers challenge the amount and legality of the settlement. And, uh, you know, our trouble started six years ago and uh, I don't think there'll ever be an end to it. So we were a happy middle-class family. We had possessions. We used to socialize. But now, I mean, nothing is possible. We, we can't afford to do those things. This is London. Michael Byrne is an Anglo-Indian based in Bhopal as an executive with a tractor firm. On the night of the gas, he drove into the city to rescue a friend. Too ill to work, he's lost his job, his house and his future. A prisoner of the gas, his only outings are to hospital. I mean, he has to have to go once a week and it's just medicines, medicines, medicines. The amount of blood tests, this and the other. Nobody's business. I mean, my arms literally turned black and blue. And they started on my feet. See, what really hurts most now is that we are having to live on charity. Every little money that comes into my house is either from my family or from some welfare. And, you know, it's really hurting because we want to work. We want, we want a future for ourselves. The Byrne family, like everyone else, lives not on the compensation they're owed, but on a state allowance of 200 rupees, five or six pounds a month. Bureaucracy turns even a handout into a struggle. See the boy letter here, signed by Director Oakley and It's an awful procedure. You have so much running around to do. You've got to have uh, so many papers. Of course, they've given you a whole list, and you have to go and uh, stand in a queue and wait for a number of hours before you get the thing going, and then you have to hang around over there. Finally, you get your card, a bank card, where you can go and collect your money every month. And then they give you a date and uh, you stand in line. And, and everyone wants to be first. So the bank opens at 11. But uh, people are queuing up since 9, maybe 8.30, to be first ones over there. Why don't you go down and see the thousands who are suffering? Those poor, the poor people who have lost fam full families, some who have lost you know, all their uh, breadwinners, they are struggling. And now they have to struggle, they stand in the sun for so for that lousy 200 rupees per month. How has carbide emerged, six years on, with all its corporate paintwork gleaming? First, by responding to Bhopal as a matter not of liability, but of charity. Within hours after the incident became known, spontaneous offers of relief came from carbiders around the world. Compassion without obligation was the strategy the corporate PR projected. I would characterize in a word the way carbiders handled this as masterful. They've uh, been able to dominate the uh, message that's been given to the American public through the media here. Carbide needed public opinion on their side, but most of all they needed to avoid the nightmare of a fight in the American courts. Where, under the media glare, American lawyers would demand and might win American-scale punitive damages. Carbide wanted the case heard in Bhopal. To keep the case contained in India, they argued that in the Carbide family, Bhopal was a very distant cousin, many, many times removed. This despite an early claim that between Bhopal and Carbide's American plants, there was nothing to choose. Uh, they are the same. Uh, the plant um, was designed and built by the engineers, were designed by engineers from this country. The safety standards, the safety facilities, 
uh, were in keeping with anything that we would use or have in this country. But if this was so, didn't the identical nature of Bhopal tie it closer to the parent company? Nine days later, the position was clarified. If you mean by identical, uh, the same kind of valve, the same size of valve, uh, the same kind of pipe, same size of pipe, that sort of thing, uh, the answer is that there are differences. Safety is the responsibility of people who operate in our plants. And you can't, in a system of this nature, take that responsibility off their shoulders and delegate it to somebody else. They tried to blame their subsidiary and try to distance themselves from the problem itself by claiming that, in fact, although they were the majority owner of the company, they really were completely different than the Indian subsidiary and had no control over it and had no authority over it. The next stage in Indianizing the responsibility was to stress un-American slackness at Bhopal. The plant was not just a distant cousin, but a feckless relative over whom they had little control. But liaison with headquarters had been routine, regular and close. I mean, we weren't in the dark ages, there were telexes at that point of time, there were regular phone calls, there were regular visits by the personnel to Bhopal. There was a hell of a lot of interaction. Practically have Americans living with us. The Americans knew there were problems. Their regular safety audit had identified faults in the MIC unit, the very area which was to result in disaster. But they didn't provide the necessary investment, equipment or corporate will to put things right. One reason may be that it was losing money. Carbide were trying to sell it off. The MIC safety manager resigned in frustration. There was frustration amongst the purchase people, there was frustration amongst us that, look here, we are trying to keep the plant safe and we send these bits and pieces of paper abroad, and nobody ever responds. After the disaster, a study by Dutch safety expert Chris Peterson was financed by his government to investigate what lessons could be learnt. MIC is highly volatile. Mixing it with anything was dangerous, with water it was lethal. Yet the Bhopal plant, in this key respect, was inherently unsafe. Water was designed into the plant, so to speak. And I mean, water was at a higher pressure side of that condenser. That means that even a small pinhole leak will immediately lead to contamination of the MIC with water. And I mean, you should not do that. Uh, that is an inherent, unsafe design. Given the amount of this hazardous material stored there, uh, you could call an accident, not specifically a disaster like this, but an accident occurring there as uh, what we call often a normal accident. What is a normal accident? A mean? normal accident means uh, that you may expect an accident during the lifetime of such a plant uh, because of, uh, it has been built in. Error had been designed into Bhopal and approved by head office, a setback for the strategy of holding the Indian management entirely to blame. So Carbide tried another tack, if not Indian incompetence, then Indian malice. We're saying that water got into that tank, and we don't know how. It could be inadvertent or it could have been deliberate. We have not used the word sabotage. They soon did, blaming a Sikh terrorist group called Black June. But Black June simply does not exist, so Carbide abandoned that story. A consultant for Carbide then invited scientists, including Dr. Peterson, to endorse a less exotic sabotage theory. At an international conference of chemical experts, Dr. Kalalka reported that a disgruntled employee was to blame. New information uncovered during Union Carbide Corporation's ongoing investigation has established that water was deliberately introduced into a methyl isocyanate storage tank from a source only a few steps away. A few hours after the incident, a hose with water running out of it. Carbide said they'd found a hose pipe next to the tank through which thousands of gallons of water had been surreptitiously introduced. It might just have been possible, but it was implausibly convenient for Carbide two and a half years after the event and a theory which disregarded all the proven safety and design shortcomings at Bhopal. Additional evidence. Union Carbide believes that the incident was caused by employee sabotage and that there was a cover-up. The scientists at the conference were unconvinced. Like Dr. Peterson, they refused to accept or endorse it. People uh, were uh, not believing him. Uh, people were, uh, some people were angry about him. 
uh, in relation to this uh, sabotage theory. I mean, uh, completely neglecting all possible other factors in relation to the accident, uh, design of the plant and so on. Uh, they said, listen, Union Carbide is responsible for the design of the plant, uh, for the operation of the plant, and also for the emergency management during the accident. Why didn't you tell anything about that? Why did you focus completely on sabotage, which we cannot check whether that has been true or not?